also following the ongoing air quality alert as the Canadian wildfire smoke continues to fade and the skies start to clear. The tri-state breathing a bit easier tonight as that dangerous plume moves south. But here's evidence of just what a difference a day makes. A drastic difference in the iconic skyline. Two photos taken just 24 hours apart. So let's bring in Storm Team 4 meteorologist Janice Huff. Janice, we might get some relief with rain as well. Yes, David, we've seen showers circulating around that same low that just hasn't moved out yet, although it did shift a little bit to the west today to push a little bit more of that smoke out of the area. Those showers will be uh, more prominent tomorrow. We've seen some sprinkles off to the north and west tonight. Temperatures in the 50s and low 60s, but there will be a few more downpours coming through tomorrow to help clear the air and a change in wind direction going into the weekend will make it even better. Here we are Friday afternoon might have some thunderstorms bubbling up in spots too. So just keep in mind of that. So a few downpours here and there, a bit of thunder and lightning, not expecting severe weather, but there could be some small hail. Right now the, the view is still a little murky, but lots of improvement in our view. 63 degrees in the city right now. The current air quality is still unsensitive are unhealthy for sensitive groups, but it's not at the extreme like what we saw yesterday. However, the air quality alert has now been extended into Friday because it's still going to be unhealthy for sensitive groups. So, you know, if you have asthma, lung issues, other issues. Uh, but the weekend, we're getting to the yellow phase, and that's moderate, and that's more tolerable, certainly. A lot less smoke will be in the area by then, setting us up for a really nice weekend. I'll show you more about what to expect temperature-wise coming up. Back to you. Janice, we will talk to you soon and Despite the improvement Janice is mentioning, the air quality index in the tri-state still reporting those unhealthy levels. Like Janice mentioned, the city remains under a health advisory until at least tomorrow night. I want to get out to News Force Checky Beckford, continuing our team coverage now live from Hell's Kitchen. Checky. And Natalie, you've heard of Thursday being the new Friday, but you really can't tell here in what is usually a lively Hell's Kitchen. We see some people across the street from us enjoying outdoor dining, but no one sitting outside here at this restaurant as New Yorkers seem to be waiting it out. Outdoor dining with a side of smoke. Today it's been a lot clearer, but you can still um, kind of taste and um, get that irritation. Many alfresco tables remaining empty tonight as New Yorkers seem to heed warnings to avoid air polluted by Canadian wildfires. We might get a little respite, but I don't want people to let down their guard and to become complacent about this. City hospitals noting an uptick in asthma related emergency room visits. The mayor directing police and firefighters to hand out N95 masks, remaining hopeful on tomorrow's outlook. There is a chance for significant improvement by tomorrow morning and throughout the day tomorrow. Joggers, bicyclists, and those craving the hazy sunlight ventured into Central Park, some still in masks. The state's health commissioner advised against it. You know, it's interesting, my brother texted me just before this saying, good day for a run. I said no. But for Al Page, living with mental illness, being cooped up inside is no easy feat. When I find myself, you know, uh, um, burdened um, from my uh, condition, I, I like to go on long walks, especially in Central Park, and it, just goes, it does the body good, it does the brain good. In New Jersey... I can see the New York City skyline today, so I think that's a good sign. Juan Arenas, one of many here, deciding to ditch yesterday's mask. Hey, what made the difference for you? I mean, just not seeing the sky orange, pretty much. That's about it. What's happening in the sky still impacting planes trying to land at area airports. The FAA taking to Twitter to explain how smoke can wreak havoc on navigation systems on the ground and in the air. These systems work well through water droplets, but can be less effective through solid particles such as smoke and ash. And as Janice mentioned, as a result of that, the state's air quality advisory extended through midnight tomorrow. And of course, New York City also announcing today that schools will go to remote tomorrow as well. We're live in Hell's Kitchen. Checky Beckford, News 4, New York. All right, Checky, thank you. The smoke and unhealthy air quality also had an impact on sporting events for a second straight day. But after postponing yesterday's game, the Yankees doubleheader with the White Sox went on as planned. And we talked to some Yankees fans who decided to head to the stadium and brave the conditions. Well, I think yesterday was an issue. I don't feel like today is. I mean, it's horrible, but it's better today than yesterday. You don't mind going to the game and dealing with it? No. No worries? No worries. I'm going to be wearing my mask, but no worries, though. <laughs> I'm a little apprehensive. I have diseases that interfere with my breathing, but I love the Yankees, and it's my birthday. 
Uh, happy birthday. Bruce will have details on the doubleheader as how the Yankees played. But uh, this morning, training for this weekend's running of the Belmont Stakes was canceled. The smoke also forced the Giants to cancel practice for both today and tomorrow. And the Jets moved their practice indoors. And we remind you that you can get all the latest air quality alerts and any breaking news regarding this at NBCNewYork.com and the NBC4 New York app.